Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to our Meet the Vendor webinar series, where you get to meet um, people from all over the world um, who will tell you about the incredible apps that are available in the Atlassian Marketplace. And today we've got Daniel from Digital Toucans. He's going to talk to us about JQL. And how important is JQL in the Atlassian universe? I'm not sure. Slightly. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. Hi. Hi. Hey, everyone. It's, uh, it's nice to have me here. All okay. right. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Uh, with, uh, And JQL, let's just talk about JQL for a second. Sure. So JQL, Jira Query Language. Um, That's right. And in terms of the power of Jira is the power of the information that is stored within it because you can put in a customised uh, field and many default fields. You can choose how you want to do it and you can track whatever piece of information you like. And what you can do once you're tracking it is you can search it. And this is where Daniel's going to show us all about the tricks around JQL and querying information because that's so important. Um, yes, uh, that's right. So. In JQL, as you mentioned, you can create custom fields um, to search on. You can you can basically search on any any field that's uh, on your issue, and uh, in the, in the query language is very simple because you just specify the name of the field and you specify the values that you are interested in, um, and this way you can you can just uh, search and create the results that uh, you are looking for. Um, so uh, most people use, uh, you know, this basic feature of JQL, but when they search by, um, uh, by the fields, um, JQL also gives you uh, more advanced functions for, uh, for, for various uh, use cases. Like for example, you can, um, you can uh, find out what is the currently logged in user. Uh, so the function that uh, evaluates to the currently logged in user, the current uh, user function, uh, or functions uh, for linked issues. So for example, this, uh, uh, this function in front of you, the linked issues, accepts a, a, a static uh, issue key and you can find all the all the issues that are linked to your issues. So it's like, it's like the beginning of a, uh, a relational functionality. Uh, whereas most of the time, uh, JQL is pretty flat. It only allows you to search uh, based on what's in your issue uh, without any regard to, to neighboring issues, to linked issues or uh, parents or subtasks. Um, so, the, the plain jQuery is very powerful. Uh, first of all, because you can use it anywhere. It's 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 uh, it's, it's everywhere. It's in uh, in Jira search functionality in advanced search. Uh, but then you can also use it um, in your dashboards. Uh, you can uh, just to source the issues. You can use it in your Kanban bar, bar and Scrum boards. Uh, you can use it in automation in script, in third party apps. So it's all over and you can use it for your reports. Um, so despite the large number of keywords um, in the in JQL, you, uh, you end up hitting the, the, the limits quite uh, quickly. Um, so for example, you, 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 you cannot search by text patterns or regular expressions. Um, the, the text searches are pretty static. And what, what people realize 
ones that they have you know many projects, many teams interacting with each other, is that they really need some nested queries functionality, sub queries, and um, to to find to, to to reason about the relations between the projects and tickets. Um, and that's that's what you really need, you know, uh, regular expressions for uh, large uh, to, to support large numbers of entities. For example, you might have many components in a project that, that have similar names, and you don't want to create a static list of each component every time, or uh, you want to match on a particular uh, pattern of versions. That's that's a very popular use case, and. Um, you also really need uh, relational jQL. That's what you really need uh, to find out all the all the children of epics and initiatives, or to find all the linked issues to your to your subset of issues uh, that are linked by a particular link type. Either it's a dependency or it's a it's a blocker, for example. And uh, what would be great to have directly in the uh, Jira advanced search are aggregated fields uh, for the for the links count and other uh, other interesting values. So, to in order to uh, fix those uh, things in, in JQL, we created JQL search extensions, and we provide you with. Uh, more than 50 new keywords. Uh, we have functions for relational JQL. We have powerful text search functions. Uh, and uh, you can save those queries as dynamic filters and you can use them everywhere. And we also provide some uh, aggregated fields. Um, this is just some, some humble bragging about uh, the successes of the company behind it. Um, so we are used more, by more than uh, 1,500 organizations already. Um, and the way we deliver the goods is by, um, so most, most of our extensions are, can be used directly in advanced search. Um, but for, for the functions, you need to go to our um, a separate screen, and you can you can use an extended version of JQL, um, as in the picture. So, for example, uh, you can see that um, I'm, I'm searching for the parents of issues in the in the smart health project uh, of all the all the tasks. And it's a recursive search, so it will go from tasks all the way up to epics or initiatives if we have them, or even higher. Um, we, because we use the dynamic filters, the, uh, you can still use the usual uh, JQL integration points like dashboards, automation, board filters, and uh, even third party apps. And um, you know, with with uh, this uh, large number of new keywords and functions, it becomes your know, Swiss Army knife of search because you can search for linkage, subtasks, uh, initiatives. So there is a good support for advanced roadmaps. You can find um, parts of the strings in the attachment content. Um, some people use it for, for example. Uh, searching for invoice numbers uh, of the of the invoices that they attach to the Jira issues. You can search by comments, versions, prints, and uh, and more. And uh, we are constantly listening for uh, user feedback, and we are adding more functionality. Um, so this concludes the presentation, and I've got a few I've got a few demos that I prepared. I'm putting it this time, then. It was interesting because, um, yeah, if we're querying and searching and searching for information, 
So as a solution provider, we want to be in a situation where we want to provide everybody within the organization a report within one or two clicks. Okay. And it's just interesting um, that we need to provide that augmented querying to go into those reports to, I guess, show the exceptions. But to me, it's, it's kind of a gap. Because if we're looking, 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 it's like we are failed a process <laughs> somewhere. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, it's an interesting scenario to be in. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I guess in your case, uh, well, in the case of many Jira users, what you do is you, uh, you set up the, the, the sourcing for the report, and then you, I, in an ideal world, you'd like it to be, you know, uh, always up to date and, you know, it's, it should reflect the reality and it should dynamically <laughs> it, change. It, it, it has to. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The, and the, I've, I've got a demo about it, but, uh, the problem is that uh, you know, with with simple plain JQL, you can produce some good reports. But it's, uh, there are quite a lot of these cases where you need something something better. Well, you need uh, to you need to see it all, and I guess that's always my point. You know, there's the basics that you're looking at day by day, and there's mm -hmm. all these exceptions and all these edge cases yeah. that you might want to look at. Um, and the fact is, we, we spoke about it earlier, if the data's in JIRA, it could be uh, queried and mm -hmm. ultimately displayed. And with a, a plugin uh, like you're offering, um, we can query in a more significant way. It's just, <clears throat> it is interesting to me because I, I see over time, right, we're in the uh, solution field is the the, volume of data increases, the volume of team increases, the complexity interactions increases, um, not necessarily, hopefully in line with our best practices of aligning our teams. And then we're in a situation where we've got a lot of questions that as a team, we need to ask the data that's in our tools. So yeah, I think it's, yeah, an amazing scenario to be in to just help us be able to query and surface that data because ultimately that's what it's about is data-driven decisions. And the fact is you probably have the data in JIRA. <laughs> and how do we service it? How do we get it out? How do we bring it to the teams? Um, yeah, JQL sounds simple, but it's the potential on top is just incredible. Go on. Um, yeah, yeah. It's basically you know, uh, fundamental JQL. It's a fundamental part of of, of Jira. It's uh, when you when you currently you know when you're thinking JQL, you, you're thinking search, but actually it's your data sourcing. You source your data to your reports, to your workflows, to your to your teams, to your people. You don't want, you want people to see uh, the correct reports. They want that, they want them to see. Uh, exactly the right issues that they are interested in. You don't want to overwhelm them with irrelevant issues, irrelevant and, data. And, and you don't want so, to confuse your teams. <laughs> and there's so much data, and I think you, you kind of hit it on the head there. It's like, it's about the data in the tool because the tool is just full of all this data for all the teams, all the functions. And it's like, yeah. what is the snapshot that you need to be successful in what you're trying to do right now with your role, with your objectives. Um, and we know there's everything else in there. And the fact is we can track it and trace it, which just is an incredibly powerful capability for any organization to have. And knowing that once you've got the data in the system and you can query it, so you can report on it, you can track it, you can manage it. It, it suddenly becomes an uh, extraordinarily powerful tool. And we've got it in our pocket. Whoever's using it last year has it got it in their pocket. So it's just about making the most of it. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so how about uh, I show you the, 
the, the, the tool in action and maybe some comparisons with uh, plain JQL. This sounds interesting. Perfect. All right. Um, okay, so this is my Jira instance here, it's a demo instance. And what I wanted to show you is uh, how you can, well, most people know it, but I'll do it anyway. It's how, how you can search in Jira. So you go to search issues and then you end up on the, the search screen and you can just uh, perform your uh, searches. and. So as I mentioned, um, with our tool, you can you can use most of the aliases directly in the Jira search. So for example, I can search for uh, issues uh, that have links. Um, so yeah, it's found some links. And uh, I also have this aggregated field with Issue link count, and I can I can search by uh, num I can sort it by the number of links, and here I see that there are some issues with quite a lot of links. So, for example, the, there's a there's an epic or there's a prototype task that's linked to five issues. So this could be an indicator that. Uh, this ticket is, um, is is pretty important, and there are a lot of interactions uh, around this ticket. Um, uh, next, I'm going to show you how the I'm going to show the the, the really annoying implementation in the Jira text search. So Jira is search text by using a uh, your field name, a tilde, and the phrase that you're looking for. So let's say that I'm looking for a testing phrase, this exact phrase in the summary. And it's, it, I got some correct results in the, in the table. So for example, this ticket has a testing in the summary and this one has a testing in the summary. But Pay close attention to this one. This one doesn't have a testing phrase in the summary. It has test. So what happens here is is uh, Jira is uh, is uh, either trying to to be really smart. Basically, Jira is using the uh, keyword tokenization and it's uh, using a dictionary to. Um, to find some approximate matches. There is no reliable way to force the exact text matching. So this may be really annoying when you're looking for, a, uh, for an exact text in the, in the issue uh, description. Uh, there are some workflows that use it. So in order to fix it, you need to go to our screen. That's so, Daniel, I've got a philosophy that no one should ever be looking for anything. Um, your, whatever you're looking for should be within three clicks of your digital workstation. So I look at all these sort of things and I, I sit there and go, they're all exceptions. You know, they're all breaking the rules because they haven't done this, haven't done that. You know, they're not in our full flow and mm -hmm. <clears throat> we should be running reports with JQL extended search to find those exceptions and surface those exceptions. Because yeah, it's interesting the way we roll is like, you know, everything's on top and there should be no digging for anything. Because <laughs> if you're digging, it's over. Um, it's got to be there, it's got to be in a click or it should be because I'd like to see this on a, um, yeah, a confluence report. So we do a lot of reporting in confluence, surface lots of JQL data, whether it's a pie chart, list, things like that, um, which show us where we're making mistakes. 
what's out of bounds and bring that to the attention of the team. And I think that's kind of the way to going forward. You know, we've got to be really strong about our data. And if you've got exceptions and you've got people looking for things, you're doing something wrong. This sort of stuff should be picking up like a net if you missed anything. Mm -hmm. And, <clears throat> but I guess it all also comes down to the thing. If you want to research something, it's available to you. But, you know, it's like, who knows the language? So, again, it comes down to, as an organisation, do you have a, um, a support team in place to be able to support you when, as a business owner, you want to extract information that's not available to you on a pre-canned report, and all of your job information should be on a pre-camp report. But you say, I need to know this. I need to know this. I need to research more. And if I don't have the capability to do write this um, JQL, do I have somewhere where I can go and ask the question, I need this JQL, knowing that the information is in our database and we can discover it and we'll surface it. So it's actually... a extraordinarily powerful thing if you think about the whole way through you know from data to operator to manager how they have to work with this whether you can work with the jql or not um whether you have the ability to have just request it and that's where we come in i think to some extent is we believe that organizations should have an expert who can write your jql for you so it's just like i'm a business owner uh, or, you know, operator, I've got this challenge, I need this data, I need it now, I've got a meeting in four hours, hey, and the data is there, and if we can query it, we can surface it, and we can then bring that information to a proper management meeting where they can have proper informed conversations regarding actual data that's actually in the system that's correct. So... This stuff is incredibly powerful. I don't think, you know, we're scratching the surface of the power yeah. of having your data in JIRA and being able to extract it and surface it and show it somewhere. I mean, this stuff's incredible. So, yeah, sorry, I just went on a rant, Daniel, but um, I love it. The ability to surface the correct data to the correct audience at the correct time that's where we're coming from. Uh, yeah, I think you, yeah, you, you, you put it in the right words. You know, it seems like a simple and pretty fundamental thing. Well, it is fundamental. It's, it's actually, and it should be simple, but really important. It's a really important problem. And uh, people usually realize it once they, once they see that you know there is a confusion around data or a confusion around the reports or uh, or that you know they, they want some some report or a workflow to be implemented that they 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 really can't and they they end up using basically multiple Excel uh, or spreadsheets for exports and uh, you know pivot tables in uh, in Excel. <laughs> Whereas such a, you know, such a waste of time and such a stress. Yeah. Um, yeah, so yeah. here we are. So th this is great. Yeah. So what else would you like to tell us about JQL? Um, I can, I think I can just, uh, just quickly show you the reports that I created uh, before this call. Well, a while ago. Um, here you can see two tables. One was created with just plain uh, static JQL and another one with, uh, with our dynamic uh, filters. And uh, so you can clearly see that the reports differ. And I just want to show you why may they differ. So the one on the left is using the, the plane uh, in JQL and it's using the, the filter that was created uh, directly in Jira. Uh, so the, I think this is the filter. Let me just see, yeah. So the filter, 
um, the jQuery filter finds all the uh, issues in the business project that, that are part of the business components. And here you can see three business components listed in the in the static list. Uh, so it all works works fine until you know there is a there is a change in components. <laughs> Where so it works until you add a component or maybe until you delete a component or you change the, the name slightly. And after you you introduce those changes, your your reports become uh, unreliable that they, they're not showing the correct data. So what, what you need to do is you need to go to the filter, you need to remember about it, and you need to you need to change the filter, you need to add uh, a component manually. Uh, whereas I'm going to show you the how how the filter for the for the table on the right is implemented. Uh, it's implemented with uh, jQuery search extensions, dynamic uh, filters. And let me just open the app. Let me go to my list of filters. This is the place that displays the um, extended the JQL. I'm going to go to this view. No, this filter looks similarly. You're, you, you are also getting the issues from the business project. Uh, the difference is that I'm using a wildcard match function, so a text pattern search function on the on the component uh, field, and I'm listing all the components that start with business. And you can see that um, this matches uh, more issues than uh, this filter this old plain filter it only found three issues because it was missing one of the one of the components i added a component in the meantime and um, so this dynamicity this uh, you know dynamic behavior uh will make it possible for you to just go create your jQuery, jql query once and uh, in most cases, it will be up to date all the time, whenever, whatever, whatever the changes uh, are made in the, in the project. And the, the results should reflect all, you know, um, that the, the new issues are added and uh, components are added in this particular scenario. But it also works for um, issue relations. So, for example, I've, I've got another report um, for, uh, for initiatives that are uh, scheduled to be worked on in the, in the first quarter of 22. And I'm using a, a dynamic JQL filter here. Uh, I'm going to go back to my list of filters. And yeah, this is the one. So I create a filter that finds all the children issues of, uh, of tickets that are labeled with Q1 2022. And you can imagine a scenario where, you know, you, you, you just, you have a project with initiatives and you label the, the, the initiatives that are scheduled for this quarter with, with a label, you, you want to find all the tickets that are underneath. So all the epics and all the tasks. And yeah, I'm getting my results. But the important thing is that if you, if the new ticket is added under the initiative somewhere in the hierarchy, it could be a subtask or a or a or a or a story. Or a, then my my reports will be updated. So you don't need to manually list the issues that are you are interested in. And it's a it's a very short query, and it's it's very powerful because it can basically fit all the data that you are interested in. Thank you.
Acuel is an incredible thing. Again, this is visualizing your data and whether it's a list, whether it's a pie, whether it's a chart, whether it's, um, it doesn't matter how you choose to visualize your data. What matters is how you query your data. And if you've got your data well organized in JIRA, you can query it effectively um, using some plugins of choice, and then you can visualize it. And <clears throat> I, I guess I'm, I'm seeing in the marketplace a growing realization of the, the value of um, live data visualized in a way that you can actually consume it, you can actually understand it, you can dig into it, um, and you can have conversations around. It's, it takes the performance of the organization to the next level. There's no two ways about it. So, yeah, when I look at things like, um, yeah, obviously JIRA, Confluence, and all the other components, um, and as you bring them together, you're bringing together a powerhouse. It's a tool suite, it's a tool chain. Um, and it's just extraordinary when you pull it all together. So what else would you like to leave us with, Daniel? Because I think, well, <clears throat> depending on those, yeah, it depends on your uh, uh, experience with Jira and JQL. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you've touched JQL and you've, scratch your head for something you know a little bit more sophisticated which is not everyone's cup of tea um there is a tool available for us so what would you like to leave us with then um i well i'd like to sum it up the i'd like to say that you know when uh Obviously, you guys are professionals, and um, whenever you have a, some kind of search or sourcing uh, need in Jira or in Confluence to source the issues from Jira in Confluence, um, I think that you know, 80% of time, you will find out that you can just go with plain JQL, and it's, it's, it's excellent. And I uh, think you should you should go with it. However, once your uh, your use cases get more complicated, uh, whenever you, uh, you you think that you like to um, uh, query for relations between the issues or you know create a report or uh, whenever the you think about creating a, an Excel export, uh, just have a quick think about GQ search <laughs> extensions. <laughs> yeah, don't. <laughs> How it can um, yeah, make no, your life simpler. It, well, it's an interesting thing. I, I, for me, it's about organizational maturity as well. It's like, as an organization, we need to master our digital operations. We've got an mm -hmm. amazing platform of choice, which is Atlassian. It allows us to deliver to every team and function. What it does is allow us also to track all those individual fields and individual configurable items that as an organization, we wanna track. And yet JIRA has a native way to query that information and to display it. But, you know, Daniel, um, yeah, and the team from, uh, <laughs> what is it? Your UK. Digital took home. Digital, yeah. you can, two can. Wow. Yeah. And whereabouts you based, Daniel? Because yeah, we talk from everyone around the world, and yeah, um, yeah, I'm based in uh, in Poland. Oh, yeah, nice. just moved to Poland a few months ago from UK. I used to live in UK for the last eight, oh, eight years. Yeah. So interesting times, but I'm extremely hopeful that um, things will come to a swift conclusion over the next two or three days. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what we'll see. But um, yeah, interesting times, unfortunately, for the people of Eastern Europe. Yeah. So wish everybody there in that part of the world, our partners, um, best wishes. Oh, there's nothing I can say. So thank you very much for joining us this evening. 
uh, all this morning, maybe for you, Daniel. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's 8 a.m. here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going Thank you very much. Yeah, so everyone get on board. JQL is amazing. Track your data, query your data, surface your data. Um, it makes for actionable information that your team can use. Um, and this is just a step up on Atlassian native Jira JQL. So thanks very much. And Confluence. <laughs> Querying. We didn't even really get to that. We'll come back another time, Daniel. I really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks everyone for joining us. Cheers.